S24 Ultra versus iPhone 15 Pro Max. Which one has the superior camera experience? Well, we have 23 categories in which we'll be comparing these phones so that you can decide which one's the right fit for you. And if you're looking to keep your new phone protected, not many phones can fall from 16,000 feet and survive. But today's sponsor, Spigen, made that possible. Check them out using the link below as well as later in the video. And now, back to the video. Both of them have some state-of-the-art cameras. The main difference being that Samsung has a much higher resolution 200 megapixel main camera as opposed to Apple's 48. And Samsung also has dual telephoto modules, a 3X and a 5X, as opposed to Apple's single 5X. Starting off with some outdoor shots, in this first one, they both did a great job at exposing the bright scene correctly. However, if we zoom in and we take a look at the trees in the distance, the iPhone exposes the image better, as some of the trees are blown out on the Samsung. The iPhone also gave this photo a warmer look as opposed to Samsung's cooler look. And if we zoom into the bottom left corner, you'll see that the ground is also sharper on the iPhone. In the second image, I do prefer Samsung's shot. Not only are the colors more vibrant, but I feel like the iPhone raised the shadows a bit too much where the bushes in the background look quite gray, and even the tree on the right lacks the punch that it's got on the Samsung. I've also noticed that if you zoom in, the iPhone has this weird double line effect. Not really sure what's going on here. And in this final outdoor shot, which was taken just as the sun was setting, I do prefer Samsung's processing more than the iPhone's, which raised the shadows a bit too much and the ground ended up looking gray. However, if we zoom into the distance, the iPhone is sharper on both the trees and the grass. This is due to the iPhone's shooting in 24 megapixels by default as opposed to Samsung's 12. You can switch the Samsung to shoot in 50 or even 200, however, those do tend to affect the image processing. Now, we are comparing these later in our high megapixel mode test, however, for the majority of the tests, we've left both in their default resolutions to ensure that the processing is at their best. And overall, in terms of outdoor shots, I do actually prefer Samsung's processing myself. If we move on to some indoor shots, the first one looks great on both, none of the windows are blown out on either of them. The iPhone does tend to once again brighten up the shadows more, so the bottom part of the image is brighter, but other than that, they both have some great HDR processing. The only place where Samsung did a slightly better job in terms of processing is when it comes to the window on the left, where we can see the individual panels of glass. Also, take a look at how much more the S24 Ultra is able to capture in the scene. It seems like its main lens is wider than Apple's. Then we have our second indoor shot, which was a bit more challenging as you have the super bright areas where the sun is shining in the front and above, and what is covered area in the shadow. They both did a pretty good job in terms of their processing. This time around, the Samsung was the one who raised the shadows more, and we ended up with a brighter image, whereas Apple was more on the darker side. Other than that, both managed to retain the highlights quite well, a bit better on the Samsung here, which managed to retain the roof better and also the door. And of course, that no indoor shot is complete without a food shot. And here, they both did a pretty good job with some very similar colors. The iPhone had a slightly wider focus, which we can see if we take a look at the sauces or the left-hand side of the plate. At the same time, Samsung sharpened the chicken bites more, which uh, does make them look crispier, to be honest. So when it comes to indoor shots, they're both very good here. Personally, I would pick the Samsung because of the extra field of view, which I think is even more important indoors, where you may not have the extra space to take a step back. Now, let's compare the zoom modules. If we start at 2x zoom, this is where both phones would be using their sensor crop feature, and they're both very good here. The iPhone is a bit brighter, although if we just take a look at the details, they're essentially the same. The S24 Ultra also has that secondary 3x module, so any photos that you take at 3x or 4x would be better on the S24 Ultra, although the difference in quality isn't that big. If we move on to 5x, which both phones have dedicated modules for, Samsung does a significantly better job. The leaves are way more detailed, there's less noise, and even the colors are far more natural on the S24 Ultra. Moving on to 10x, where both phones would be digitally zooming on their 5x modules, Samsung once again does a much better job. The features of the statue are far more defined, and there's also considerably less noise. And if we move on to 25x, which is the highest possible zoom on the iPhone, the difference is even greater. Now, the S24 Ultra maxes out at 100x zoom, so here's a quick example as to how they both compare. Of course, on the iPhone, you have to manually zoom in at four times to get this magnification. Overall, if you care about zoom, the S24 Ultra is clearly the superior choice at both low and high zoom ranges. Now, if we compare the Ultraides, it does seem like Samsung is doing a better job here too. In this example, the S24 Ultra does a better job at exposing the scene with a lot of the shadow details being lost on the iPhone. 
PS24 Ultra's ultralight is also sharper if you take a look at the water and uh, a lot of the other areas too. In our second shot, which was taken in a brighter scene, the difference isn't as big as before, but the S24 Ultra still does a better job once again. If we zoom into the bottom left corner, the iPhone is quite blurry as opposed to Samsung, um, and if we zoom in further ahead, the S24 Ultra is once again more detailed. And now, if we take a look at the ultrawide indoors, aside from the brighter and cooler image on the S24 Ultra, the differences are quite small. They both have about the same level of brightness in the center, with the Samsung being noticeably sharper on the corners and also with less noise. I do prefer the colors on the iPhone's ultrawide here, but overall, it does seem like Samsung has the superior ultrawide, at least for daytime shots. Now, their ultrawide modules do support macro shooting, and this is the result that you can get from both. Here, I do prefer the iPhone. Not only are the colors punchier, but we also get a slightly wider focus. And since we now have a 5x little photo module on both, we can also take portrait mode shots using it which results in a more natural portrait shot when compared to using their other lenses. And here, they both did a great job in terms of the edge separation. Slightly better on the S24 Ultra if you look at my hair, although it did mess up on the tree as it got some of its branches in focus, which the iPhone managed to get right. I do prefer the processing on the iPhone here, the image is brighter, and my coat looks more natural too, whereas the S24 Ultra did crush it. Of course, you can also take portrait mode shots at 2x, and here, I do prefer the Samsung because of its superior edge separation, and this time, the colors are better on the Samsung too. If we take a look at portrait mode pets, the S24 Ultra is just incredible here. I mean, sure, part of it is the additional blur that you get by default, which can be adjusted on both phones, but even when it comes to the edge separation, the sharpness of Ren's nose, everything is absolutely perfect on the S24 Ultra. Like, this is probably the best portrait mode shot that I've ever seen on a phone. And their portrait modes are so advanced these days that you can even take a portrait of an object. And here, none of them are perfect, but the S24 Ultra manages to do a better job when it comes to the edge separation, whereas the iPhone blurred almost the entirety of the plan here. Not only that, but the object itself was more in focus and sharper on the S24 Ultra. So if you love taking loads of portrait shots, the S24 Ultra is overall a superior experience. Now, something that I like to do on my phones is shoot in RAW, as I get much more editing flexibility in my shots. Both can shoot in these pre-edited RAW modes, Pro RAW on the iPhone and Expert RAW on the S24 Ultra, which gives you a very good starting point as the result, which you can then edit even further. I was able to push the iPhone's image more and recover more highlight and shadow details, so you do get more dynamic range from the iPhone in case you want to shoot in RAW and edit your photos afterwards. Now, if we compare their highest resolution modes, 200 megapixels on the Samsung versus 48 on the iPhone, both being JPEGs here, you'd expect the S24 Ultra to be four times sharper. But as a matter of fact, the iPhone is the one that's sharper. Samsung tends to add a ton of post-processing sharpening, and the end result looks far lower res than Apple's 48 megapixel photo. Now, you can also take 50 megapixel photos on the S24 Ultra, and surprisingly, at 50 megapixels, the image is actually sharper than the iPhones. If we look at the football page here, or the buildings in the distance, there is more detail. So as long as you're using the 50 megapixel mode, the S24 Ultra will give you the sharpest looking image. Now, shooting these camera comparisons can be quite tricky as we are carrying multiple phones and we need to make sure that we keep them protected. So earlier, I mentioned that one of Spigen's cases was discovered after an incident where a phone was sucked out of an airplane at 16,000 feet and survived. Like, there's literally no drop test like it. This protection now comes to the S24 lineup with Spigen's new MacFit range that features MagSafe compatibility with their own 100% original teardown design. Their Tough Armor MagFit now has MagSafe functionality also, with reinforced shock absorption and a handy kickstand. Their newest Enzo Aramid case uses Kevlar for some insane protection, providing a textured feel and style at only 47.5 grams. And finally, the Cryo Armor offers raised edges to protect your cameras and display supported by their air cushion technology. So it's no surprise that this survived a 16,000 feet drop. You also get improved cooling and non-slip patterns for gaming on the go. Check out Spigen by using the links below.
And now, back to the video. In terms of video recording, the S24 Ultra can do both 8K30 as well as 4K 120, none of which the iPhone is capable of doing. The 8K footage is great for when you want to crop it, especially useful on the zoom module, uh, as you can zoom in even further thanks to this, while the 4K 120 is useful if you're planning on slowing it down. The iPhone, however, can do ProRes video, which is incredibly clean, and also record in log. So if you plan on editing your footage afterwards, the iPhone is the better choice. If we compare 4K 60 HDR on both, they're both doing a very good job, with the iPhone being a bit sharper and also able to handle bright scenes better, whereas Samsung seems to be crushing the shadows quite a lot here. So if you care a lot about video, the iPhone is still the better choice. We have a similar story when it comes to ultrawide video, with the iPhone being brighter with more shadow details. The grass is also sharper, and if you take a look at the sun, you'll see that we start seeing some banding on the S24's footage, whereas the iPhone's is still incredibly clean. Both phones can also shoot in slow motion, 1080p at 240, while the S24 Ultra can also do 4K 120. Now, if we compare the slowest modes on both, which I'm assuming most people would be using, they're equally as slow. But the iPhone does have the cleaner footage, that is sharper and with noticeably less noise. So if you care about slow motion, the iPhone is the way to go. Both can also do portrait mode video, aka cinematic mode, and despite both shooting in 4K 30, the iPhone's footage is miles better. Just take a look at how sharp my hair is. The S24's footage looks like 1080p here. The edge separation is also better on the iPhone, not just if you look at my hair, but also if you look at my coat. Cinematic mode is substantially better on the iPhone here. Both can also do action mode, which is this super steady video mode for when you're running or doing any intensive activities. And I gotta say, they're both very stable here, but the iPhone's footage is quite a bit sharper and with better image processing. That's because it is a 2.8K clip, 60 FPS, as opposed to Quad HD 60 on the S24 Ultra. So personally, I would also use the iPhone for action shots. Which brings us to night mode. In this first example, the iPhone did a significantly better job. Everything is brighter and sharper. This is most obvious if you take a look at the wall or the chair. Yeah, I'm very impressed with how good the iPhone is here. In the second example, the S24 Ultra did perform better than before, likely due to the entire scene being brighter although for some reason it had this overly blue cast on the top left, which is definitely not how the scene looked in real life. The iPhone is also sharper when you zoom into the scaffolding or any of the text. In this example, they're more similar. The S24 Ultra is sharper if you take a look at the trees on the left or the sign, although the colors are quite washed out and I do much prefer the overall look of the iPhone's photo here. So when it comes to night mode photos with the main module, the iPhone does perform better. When it comes to night zoom, in the first example, taken at 5x, the iPhone seems to have used a shorter exposure time which resulted in a sharper image, but also one that has more noise. Take a look at how much cleaner the S24 Ultra's shot is. If we switch to 10x, the iPhone's shot is the one that's now clearer and brighter. We can see the individual tree branches and the wooden panels on the bridge. So contrary to the daytime zoom, a night zoom seems to be better on the iPhone at least at longer ranges. So what about the ultra -wide module at night? Well honestly, I'm not really a fan of either of them here. The S24 Ultra is very noisy, the iPhone doesn't seem to show any noise at all, but it is also very very soft with a lot of the detail being lost. So if I had to pick one, I would pick the Samsung as it is more detailed, but yeah, none of them are great here. Moving on to Night Portrait, this was shot at 2x on both. The iPhone doesn't actually support Night Portrait unless you use the main module, which of course is way too zoomed out, so on the iPhone this is just a regular portrait shot, whereas Samsung did use its Night Mode here. And yeah, I'm not sure what Samsung did to my face, but Honestly, it looked like I escaped from a horror movie. Like, my pupils are just pure black and my face looks so heavily processed. The iPhone is way more natural here, but it does lack the colors as well as the background blur, so I wouldn't really use any of them here. Now, Samsung mentioned that night video is a big improvement this year, thanks to all the AI processing, and I gotta say, it is pretty good, but not good enough to beat the iPhone. The iPhone's footage is much cleaner and the colors also look more natural. Samsung has this weird purple hue going on. However, in a number of areas, the S24 Ultra's footage is actually sharper and more detailed than the iPhone's. So if Samsung could maybe reduce the amount of noise and also fix the weird colors, we might actually have a better looking video from the S24 Ultra. Samsung also mentioned that night zoom video is especially good this year. And comparing the two side by side at 5x first, the S24 Ultra is definitely much sharper than the iPhone here. The iPhone's footage is brighter, but also extremely muddy and soft. If we compare them at 10x, the story is quite similar, with the Samsung being sharper, but also darker. 
while the iPhone is brighter, but the footage is significantly softer. Personally, I do prefer Samsung's results here. Moving on to the front camera and daytime, they're both extremely similar here with almost identical image processing. There are only two bigger differences that I've noticed. The first is that the iPhone got the plan to my right and focus, which the Samsung did not, and we also have a wider field of view on the iPhone. But other than that, very good results on both. Moving on to front night, the S24 Ultra seems to do a better job here. The image is noisier if you look at the sky, but my face is much sharper and considerably more detailed. Although I'm not really a fan of the waxy look that Samsung gave me. The iPhone is more natural in this regard, but it is just too blurry to be usable. And now we have a front video with a mic test, which I'll let you guys watch first. Okay, this is a front-facing video test between the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So. Let me know which one um, which one looks better, and then also which one sounds better. This is the audio coming from the S24 Ultra, and this is the audio coming from the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Okay, so in terms of the image quality, none of them were great. The S24 Ultra was too dark, with the sky also being quite blown out in a number of areas, whereas the iPhone was better exposed, but my face looked like an orange. I do overall prefer the iPhone's footage here, mostly because of its more balanced exposure and also wider field of view. There was also a big difference in terms of audio. The S24 Ultra sounded extremely processed and distorted. It could have been from the wind, whereas the iPhone sounded way more natural and punchier. And then we have front portrait, and here the S24 Ultra has a significantly better result. The iPhone really struggled with exposing the image properly, mostly because of how bright the background was. But even if we ignore the processing and we just take a look at the separation, Samsung simply did almost a perfect job of separating my hair from the background. Oh, and you might have noticed these frames in the background. They're changing every week and they're always the two wallpaper packs that we're launching in that specific week. This one is part of the Spiral Spectrum pack that we've just launched on Tuesday, while this one is part of our Friday pack, which contains a collection of 10 stunning desert wallpapers. We haven't picked the name for this pack yet, so if you guys have any suggestions, leave your comments down below. And of course, if you wanna check our app out, simply search for wallpapers in the App Store and the Play Store. So in conclusion, which phone has the superior camera? Well, they both have their strengths. If you mostly take outdoor photos in daytime, the S24 Ultra is going to give you a punchier image with a stronger HDR look. The S24 Ultra is also better in terms of the zoom at any range, including zoom video. And its ultrawide is also superior when compared to the iPhone in daytime. On top of this, the S24 Ultra also has an outstanding portrait mode, literally the best one I've seen on any phone so far, and also the sharpest high resolution mode. The iPhone, however, is still the king when it comes to video, day and night, and also the superior choice when it comes to night photos. And if you care a lot about the special camera modes like cinematic mode, action mode, macro, slow-mo, raw, the iPhone is also better there too. And if you take a lot of selfies and front videos, the iPhone is also the superior choice due to its wider angle and the superior front video. Overall, it just depends on what type of shots you take the most. So let me know which phone are you going to go for next, and stay tuned for our upcoming camera comparisons and future videos too on the S24 Ultra. I'm Daniel, it's been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.